All right, so I love playoff time when we get two teams that have played against each other in the regular season already. So it gives us a gauge of what teams did well, what they didn't do well, what the opposing team did against them, all of that stuff. This was a 21-14 game. The Chiefs won. They actually got a fumble six in this game, which was kind of the difference in this game. But Miami struggled to really get anything going. So I thought I would go back and kind of look and see what really transpired in this game, okay? And so where Tua is always at his best is when he can hit his back foot and get the ball out of his hand. So right here, we're gonna run a deep pylon. We're gonna come back with Waddle running a deep curl. And then off the play action, we're gonna have a flat here. So really reading the outside defender here. And you're gonna see right here, as we get to the top, ball's already out of Tua's hands. Now, Reed may say here, just drop it to the flat in this particular case, but Tua has the ultra confidence in his accuracy and his timing that all he's looking for a lot of times is windows. He's not looking to see exactly what the defense does. He's looking to see, is there a window in which I can fit this ball in? And so right here, you see it. So it's a great job right here by Tua just kind of fitting this ball in between defenders. And you're gonna see this becomes a theme uh, anytime Miami plays. Another theme that came up was Miami doesn't have a great hot game. What I mean by that is a lot of quick throws built in for Tua when a team brings pressure. So this is something the Chiefs are going to do, especially in third down situations, but they're going to change it up. Right here, they're going to bring a backside corner, what we call a corner cat blitz. And obviously no one sees it. There's no chance to pick it up. But what you're going to notice here is that it's really more about not having a quick throw for Tua. Okay, so you see the pressure is already getting there. As we play this out, right here, right? Nobody's really in a position to be able to catch this football. Everybody's starting to break and Tua is already going down because the timing of this whole thing, he's gotta have a quick throw. No quick throw, right? This guy's just starting to come out of it. Tyree Kill's going to wrap this in route right here, but we got a free hitter coming on Tua. And this is going to be a theme, is what do they do when they get pressure? In a pressure situation, do they have the answers against a Spagnolo defense that is going to bring pressure? Okay, so here's another look at it, right? When we go back and look at this play, play action, okay? So we're gonna have, go route out here and we're gonna have this skinny post inside. You're gonna notice there is nothing else happening underneath here. So we've got defender, 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 doesn't matter. What was I saying? Tua, what does he want to do? He wants to come back and see, do I have a window? Can I fit it in there? And you see right here, man, it's tight, right? There's bodies everywhere, but it doesn't matter. Tua says, hey, I can split you. I can throw it just inside of this guy and I can beat this backside guy with the throw and I can put it right where I want to put it. Boom, right on the money to Tyreek Hill in between four defenders. This is a huge part of their offense. All right, something else that they love to do. They love to what read or something else they love to do. They love to run what I call the RPO naked. Okay? So sometimes it'll be the RPO, other times it'll just be a play action as this one is. But what they do is they're going to have the opportunity at times where they're going to step down and they're going to have the run called and then Tua will read this defensive end. And with that, they'll have basically the same concept. They have a guy running through the seam and he has the ability to settle in that hole right there and catch the football. Then they have somebody else that runs the shoot down the sideline. So it's kind of peak here one and then kind of get out to your flat defender, possible two. And then they're gonna wrap somebody into the flat number three. So this is going to be a part of their offense, they are gonna run this numerous times in the game. And again, it's about the feel with Tua. So right here, here's what it is. He comes out off of the play action and all he's doing is looking, do I have a window here? Can I throw it in this window? That's the first thing he looks at. And so it's usually that window and the flat coming out here, but every once in a while, you'll see this shoot uh, pop open and he'll be able to hit it. But again, it's about trying to jam some of these things in there. Tight look right there. 
leading into his receiver getting hit. You see his receiver is kind of settling in the hole. Tyreek Hill's great at this. Uh, you know, that they go in there and they find the window to help Tua. So it's like, hey, our number one read is going to be open because we're going to find a way to make it open. Here, they were off just a little bit. Leads into a big hit there uh, on his receiver. But this is continually a theme within this offense is, do I have an opportunity to throw it? Okay, so here we go right here. We've got to go on the outside and go on the outside. And then we've got kind of an inside fade right here. And again, this isn't open. You got two defenders on Jalen Waddle right here, but it doesn't matter. What is Tua saying? Can I make a throw? Can I find a way, if I pick my first guy, can I find a way to get the ball to him? And he does right here. He throws a back shoulder, right? It's about accuracy. It's about confidence, about believing you can make a throw. Boom, right there. Oh, I see this guy's playing high and this guy's way inside. Let me just set it on the back shoulder. So it's so much about timing and accuracy within this offense, more than it's just about scheming guys open. So again, give me my first read. Let me find my first read. I'm gonna take my shot with Tyreek Hill. So here's a great opportunity that they had right here. Safety coming down, corner staying underneath. But so much of this game was about missed opportunities. Just a little bit long on the throw. Just missing a big opportunity right there. Here we go again. And again, you see and you'll notice that first read, first read, first read, first read. That's where Miami makes their money is coming back and Tua, his confidence, his accuracy, beating even sometimes good defense. So right here, we're gonna run the deep pylon. I think this is Waddle running it right here. And then we're gonna come with a shallow underneath it. So for me, I'm gonna come out and I'm gonna read this defender. And I'm gonna say, ah, he's turning and he's carrying. So I'm gonna look to replace him underneath to the shallow. Tua comes back and says, I'm looking at that defender simply to see if my guy can beat him, right? And so that's what he sees right there. Is, oh, my guy's got a step on him. I'm accurate, I'm gonna put it, and we're gonna beat him with that step. I'm looking at it and going, nope, these guys are all going that direction and leaving the flat open. I'm taking the flat there for a huge play. So another opportunity for a big play, on whichever side you wanna look at it, we just miss by inches up top, but make the game easier. See the defense, understand what they're doing, take that underneath throw, and we've got a huge play without having to throw the ball down the field. Here we go once again with the pressure, right? The theme of the pressure, okay? We're gonna make the fake that direction. We're gonna bring pressure. Watch what the pressure does to Tua. Pressure, sees pressure, oh my gosh, panic, right? Has an opportunity right here off of the pressure. So again, first thing to look at always is, okay, they bring in pressure. Where's my quick throw? Don't have a quick throw, don't have a quick throw, don't have a quick throw, I got no quick throws out in front of me, okay? So he's got his back coming out here to the flat. Maybe that's the quick throw. So he got pressure here. I get it, but just settle in and make the throw. Settle in, turn, and know where your guy is and just put it on your guy and do something positive with the football. It doesn't have to be a big play when they're bringing pressure. We just want a positive play, but you get pressure on Tua. They don't have a lot of quick throws and you speed him up and it makes it hard on him. Let him play and throw to his first read. And this is the kind of stuff that happens. You see it. Hit the back foot. Boom. Balls out of his hands. Quick slant. Right? That's where they want to play. They want to play in between the hash and the numbers on both sides. That's where they make their money is right there. So don't get pressure. Allow them to have those first throws. Bang. Balls on the money over and over again from Tua when he gets to play in rhythm. There it is again, right? Play, play fake. Who's my first read? Tyreek Hill is my first read. Is there a hole right there? Not looking at defenders so it doesn't slow me down. Hit the back foot. If I can make the throw, make the throw. Boom, there it is. Where's the ball? On the money. You see it over and over again. This is to a superpower. Hit the back foot, anticipate and accuracy. Boom, where are they hitting? 
in between the hash and the numbers. So there's the theme again. Take away the number one throw. Take away his first shot. Okay, so here looks as if they're trying to run a little stutter. Go right here, safety over the top. Take away the middle, that's there. He's got to work to his secondary receivers once again where he struggles, okay? He leaves the ball back behind his guy. Now he works through it and he gets to his check down, but out of whack, feet out of whack, not in rhythm, and it usually leads to negative plays. This is the other thing that I'll notice. So we talk about hitting your number one read. And so I feel like sometimes Tua decides ahead of time where he's going to throw the football. And so a lot of that does lead to throwing it, jamming it into your number one read. But right here, Tyreek Hill once again running this quick post, skinny post, whatever you want to call it. So keep your eyes on him, right? Right there. Like, Based on the other things that we've seen, this is about as open as it gets. Like I would expect Tua to throw this one to this side right off the bat. But instead, he's working backside to a press corner, go route over here with a safety over the top. And I just sit back and I say, okay, wh why are we doing that? Like what in his mind made him do that? I just think this is one of those where I made a decision. I'm going to throw it to the backside. I got press. I'm going to look over here to Tyreek's side and I'm going to draw this safety over here and then I'm going to throw it back there and hope that that guy has won. Okay, maybe you can do that if it's Tyreek Hill over there because you expect him to win every time. But uh, sometimes you'll see to a kind of anticipate where he's going to throw it. To me, this one should go to Tyreek Hill. Stay with what you do. Do what you do well and stick to it. He's got a big chunk throw right here. Another missed opportunity right there, in my opinion. But this is what happens a lot of times when you're playing offense by not necessarily reading defenders or reading defense, but making your decision based on what the structure of your play is. Hey, I'm going to jam it in there to this guy if there's any chance whatsoever, instead of having a concept that says, Okay, I've got a high low. I can come back and look at that defender. If he goes high, I throw it low. If he goes low, I throw it high. That's not necessarily the structure of how Miami does things. Okay, so nice job right here. So same idea right here. We're coming back. My first read is Tyreek Hill. Where at? Between the hash and the numbers. I'm taking a look at it. For whatever reason, didn't feel like he could fit it in there. We've got a shoot. Coming off of that, so kind of like that naked bootleg that we talked about, right? We've got the quick skinny seam there with the shoot off of it, and then we get the back in the flat. This was really well done by Tua to work through his progression. I don't like the skinny. I don't have the shoot. This guy's carrying. Now get down to the guy underneath. Unlike what we saw earlier in the game where he took the shot over the top, uh, you know, with that guy clearing out. This time does a nice job of reading through it going to need more of this. When the first one's not there, instead of jamming it in there, dump it off. Go ahead and take the one underneath. Those can be nice plays for you. First one would have been a big play. That was a nice little gain right there. Okay, so here's the naked bootleg that I was talking about. The RPO right here. So I'm coming off, reading the defensive end. Defensive end steps out. What do I have? I have a seam. I have a shoot. And I have a wrapper coming to the flat right here. Okay, this time, this is something that Tua progresses through really well. Don't feel like that with all of their plays, but with this naked bootleg, uh, this, this RPO naked, they do a great job of progressing through it. He wants to hit that one, but if he doesn't get that one right now here, there's bodies there. He's great at getting to that second read or that flat really quickly. The accuracy setting him up. And again, you see nice little play. Doesn't have to throw it far down the field to get big plays because of the speed down the field allows them to really open up the underneath stuff. And that's why at times I'd love to see him take more of these underneath throws because teams are so afraid of their speed down the field. Okay. 
And we talk about speed down the field. We're talking about this guy primarily, Tyreek Hill. So another thing uh, that you want to watch for in this game, and if I'm too, I'm paying attention to is, does this back safety, when they've got a one high safety look, because this safety drops down over here, does he favor Tyreek Hill, Hill's side? And so right here, he's going to favor to the back side. On this play, you're going to notice Jalen Waddle is simply going to run down the, the middle of the field or, or, or run a seam. He's just going to run a straight line. Then they're going to run a hook and a flat off of it. So this is one of those things that if this guy leans over to the front side seam, no doubt, I'm going to take this one-on-one -on -one backside to Tyreek Hill. But if that safety leans over to Tyreek Hill, I want to make sure and peek and see who else is back here. If there's one high safety and that safety is going the other direction, who's back here? So you look for little opportunities like that. There it is, right there, right? Say, trying to play some kind of combination man, maybe on the front side, whatever it is, but see the safety. Which way does the safety go? You see Jalen Waddle open right here for a huge opportunity for a big play. Now we get a completion, balls out of our hands. I like it, but we miss an opportunity here to get the big play against a mess up by the Chiefs defense. And so that's really was the theme in this game was missing some opportunities that were out there. And it was really the theme for both teams. I thought Kansas City missed a lot of opportunities as well. So here's another one. I just asked myself, okay, if we're going to throw it to Tyreek Hill when he's got four guys around, if we're going to throw it to him uh, when, when the defense doesn't really say throw it to him, why are we not throwing it to him when he's wide open? So there's another one where I feel like Tua just came out and said, hey, I'm just going to work that free safety. If I can get the free safety to go this side, then I'm going to throw this corner route to the back side. If he stays in the middle, then I'm going to work Tyreek Hill here. I don't even know if he, if he said that as much as he just said, I am going to try to work this guy to the one side and then just throw it up on the back side. Like to me, this is a Tyreek Hill throw. You need to come back and see this and then work to the back side because this throw to Tyreek Hill has an opportunity to be a huge play. Now, this works out for him because they end up making a great play. I think that's Cedric Wilson on the other side. Great job going up and getting that ball and winning the one-on-one. -on -one. But to me, that ball should have been to the other side. And so you can't spend your time just anticipating what's going to happen. Got to be able to read it out and see what's happening. Right? So, he, he, I mean, again, like I can't decide why. He makes some of these throws and he doesn't make the other one. So here we go. This little uh, skinny post. You got all these bodies here, yet he's making this row. The last row, he passed up for another one. So that's why the only thing that I can deduce from it is that he's kind of making his decision on certain plays where he's going to go. I'm going to look one direction and move the defense one direction. I'm throwing it back the other direction no matter what. Instead of being able to come out and go, okay, is this open? If it's not, then I'm going to go back to the other side. Trying to fit it in. Ah, just missed another big play opportunity on that skinny post. And this is the nature. When Miami is winning football games, they're making these plays. When they're losing football games, they're not making these plays. Here we go again. We talked about this. This is the RPO naked. Okay, so you see it, we're gonna come down, run play, read the defensive end, we've got our flat, we've got our seam, and we've got our shoot or swing coming out to that side. There it is, right there. You give it to me, you give me an opening, boom, ball's coming out of my hands, really well done. Nice job by Jalen Waddle to kind of settle in that hole, get ourselves a big play. Oh, here they come with pressure again, bringing a guy free off the edge. Watch, nobody's open, nobody looks, nobody looks, I shouldn't say open, nobody looks. Nothing quick happening to the front side where the pressure's coming from. So here we go, right? Here comes that pressure. We got a free hitter coming here and there's nowhere for Tua to throw it because nobody's looking. We're always saying in this offense, we're gonna beat it with a throw, right? More times than not, we're gonna, not gonna have issues. We're gonna solve it with our backs and our offensive linemen. And when we do, we've gotta beat the pressure with a throw, but really hard to do for a quarterback when nobody is looking. 
So something to pay attention to. And on the other side, Tua, throw the ball away. Throw the ball away. When you have pressure like this, just know where your outlet is and just throw it at his feet. Don't take these sacks in pressure situations. Uh, even if nobody's open, just throw it out of there. And again, there's an art to that. Not a lot of quarterbacks are great at that, but just understanding uh, when the play is over, when I don't have anything, throw the ball away and save that eight, nine, ten yards that puts you behind the sticks. Okay, so we got down late. 21-14 in this game. Miami gets a couple big runs, puts themselves in a position uh, to, uh, you know, to at least tie this game up, okay? So, again, these are the things that I'm talking about with Tua where he's got to get better, in my opinion, is if number one is not open, I know you want to jam it to number one, you want to fit it into number one, you're confident throwing it to number one, but if he's not there, where do I go with the football from there, okay? This one, to me, is really simple. We're going to run a slant here and a slant here. Okay, we've got two safeties on the back end. So my read is simply this defender right here. Okay, you come back and pre-snap says, I want to try to get it into the inside slant. I get it. But if this guy comes down and chases it, and again, this is one of the reasons why I like to read defenders over reading my receivers or reading space is because if I look at that defender, that defender tells me what he's doing. So he comes down and collisions my guy. So. Tua is still trying to fit it into his guy, trying to stick it to his guy, wants to, wants to throw it to that guy because he's determined in his mind, that's my throw. There's the throw right there. You hit Tyreek Hill right here on time, you tell me, right? He's up on the safety one-on-one. -on -one. He beat the corner really bad. We got an opportunity now to set ourselves up for a touchdown. But look at how long, and again, this to me is football one-on-one. -on -one. Double slant combination. Everybody in the league throws it. Read this guy, this guy holds inside it all, throw the outside one. Even on double slants, we're trying to throw the outside one. And so for Tua to get stuck on the inside, trying to jam it into the inside guy and not getting to number two, this is an issue for me. This is something that he's got to get better at. There's the throw. Huge opportunity outside to Tyreek. We miss that opportunity. Here we go. Now we've got to try to recover off of our number one read. And usually in this offense, Bad things are happening when we've got to move beyond what I really want to throw. Okay, here's another great example. Okay, we want to come back. I get it. We're going to run that same thing in between the hash and numbers. I want to throw it. Got two high safeties, okay? I want to throw it. Uh, I want to find that window. No problem with that. But what I want you to see from the get-go is what's the leverage? Right off the bat, if I'm coming over here, I've lost leverage on this. I've got inside leverage on the skinny post or Jalen Waddle on this side. I got inside leverage. It's not a good throw. We're just jamming it in. Move on. Move on. We've got a choice route right here. So look, like I mean, look how tough that is, yet we're trying to force it in to that throw. Force it into our number one guy instead of seeing defenders and what defenders are doing, which helps to us to decide, okay, do I have a shot at that or do I not have a shot at that? And, you know, we can go all the way back to the beginning and the idea that on this particular play, we've got press coverage right off the bat. So that worries me right off the bat, the press coverage. So if I see these safeties go back or I see something that allows me to think I might have this window here, I want to see that release. I want to see the release right here. Boom. I'm going to peek over at that guy. Oh, shoot. Once I see inside leverage on that, I'm going to move on to my one-on-one -on -one choice here off of this defender. Bang. There's the completion. I don't know. Maybe we get a first down. Maybe we're set up. We're in great shape here. There's plenty of time on the clock trying to force it in. Once again, cost us another opportunity. All right. Now, here's the last play. Uh, of the game. They're in a long yardage situation. What are the Chiefs going to do? Smart. They're going to bring pressure. They've had success bringing pressure against Tua all day long. So we're going to bring pressure again and we're going to force him to play faster than he wants to. That is not his game. His game is I need to get into my back foot and see and rip that number one read. You make me play faster than that and all heck breaks loose within this offense. You make me play slower than that. Take away the first read and this offense is not the same. So what are they going to do in a critical situation? Spags is going to bring pressure. 
We've got pressure. We've got everything we want, though, defensively, because I've got a one-on-one go route over to this side. Okay, it's a long yardage situation, so we got to push the ball down the field. But I got a one-on-one go route. Just got to simply wait for him. Don't panic. Don't panic. He gives a little move inside, but you see, Tua already feels the pressure, and he's throwing this football instead of, hey, you got time. Get back, set up. Yes, you're going to take a hit. Let your guy get going and lay the ball out there in front of him. I mean, we got a touchdown. We got a tie game right here if we settle in and make this throw. Instead, they speed him up with the pressure. Bad throw right there. So, something to pay attention to in this wild card game is that's what Miami wants to do. Are they allowed to do what they want to do in this game? Or do the Chiefs defense, do they change the script on them? Do they force Tua to play faster than he wants to? Or play slower than he wants to? Or do they take advantage of when he tries to jam it into his number one guy? Those will be keys on who moves on in the playoffs, Kansas City or Miami.